All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the third of the fourth Kensington Hybrid Work Environments webinar. Today, we're going to be talking all about mastering flexible work. My name is Lisa Skydebor Schuler, and I am joined by Nicola Pease today. So I appreciate Nicola joining in. You'll hear a little bit more about her um, in the coming slides. We've got a pretty short agenda as this is only 30 minutes today. And we'll be going through how popular flexible work is with some industry statistics, as well as Nicola talking about why flexible working works. And then I'll go through some work uh, solutions as far as some equipment recommendations if you're struggling to figure out what your employees would best be suited with. And then we'll end this with the Q&A. So that being said, if you do have any questions throughout this today, you are welcome to drop them in the chat box and we will get to them at the end um, and try to see what we can do. So if we can go to the next slide here, um, we're gonna start with some statistics out there. So basically um, there's tons of statistics floating around the out uh, in the world today with the pandemic and the change of the way that we're working. And so it used to be that we only worked at the desk um, in a traditional office for the majority of the population. Uh, now with the pandemic starting in, if you can go to the next slide, we're not only working at the desktop, but we are working in coffee shops or we're working in a shared workspace where multiple people are coming by on a regular basis. And then the newest addition is more and more people working from home, maybe not at the normal nine to five hours that we have. Um, so we have to figure out a solution of how people can still be productive and people certainly are and then how we can make that work with their setups and really um, make sure that we're taking care of the whole person, not just the productivity side, but their mental um, and personal well-being as well. And so if you're wondering how many people are actually working remotely these days, uh, it's about 90% of HR leaders are saying that they plan to allow their uh, employees to work at least part-time uh, remotely. So that could be from home or in another location. And so I say that that's extremely important to point out that remotely isn't always at home sitting at a desktop. When the pandemic first started, basically we were looking at, oh my goodness, I have no workspace. Where do I set up my stuff? And so with that being said, um, Cole, if you can go to the next slide, you can see how many different places people are working at. And I can tell you all of these are real life in the wild setups that we've had uh, with our Kensington equipment. And basically you can work in the airport now while you're waiting to catch a flight because we have that flexibility to do so in a lot of organizations. If you have that right equipment, you can get a pretty good setup working on the go. And then thinking about if you are on vacation or traveling for business, you can still check your email in the hotel lobby um, while you're waiting for that breakfast to be served or throughout the day. I can tell you I've done this one numerous times where I've been in a hotel lobby and since the pandemic, um, there are so many more people working in the hotel lobby than there has ever been before. And it's just shocking to me to see how many people are truly taking advantage of that flex type work where it may not be in your home in those traditional hours. Uh, if you have to get your oil changed on your car or other maintenance, you can take your office with you, which is a great thing. That's a time saver. Um, if your company is allowing you to do so, you may be able to continue to work, continue to be productive without having to take that time off to still allow for that good work-life balance that we are all striving for. Um, and then finally, in a friend's house or other locations there, basically having portable equipment that you can take anywhere allows you to go outside of the standard hours if your company's policy is allowing that, and you're able to be so incredibly productive by not having the same barriers that we had before with the traditional office setup alone. So that being said, I'm going to pass it over to Nicola. Nicola and I met, I think, about a year ago, probably, virtually speaking. And she has um, really done a great job. And I'm going to go through a couple more of these stats, actually, before I pass it over to you, Nicola. Um, but she's going to tell you all of the work that she's done around flex work and some of the findings that she has. But a few last stats before we turn it over to her. 
Uh, so 37% of employees said that they would leave their current job in a traditional office to join a company that offers a flexible work environment. That is an incredibly high number if you're listening in and you're in HR or some of those decision-making roles that if you're not allowing that space, a lot of your workers could go other places. So just something to consider as you're designing your hybrid work policy um, that you definitely want to consider what would be in the employee's best well-being. 83% said they don't feel like they have to be in an office to be productive. I can vouch for that, that I can work productively. I have my laptop. I have my laptop riser, keyboard, mouse. I have that set up ready to go that I can work wherever I need to to get the job done. But it doesn't necessarily have to be in my home office or in that traditional space to reach that maximum productivity level. And then 50% of employees globally are working outside their main office headquarters already at least two and a half days a week. So some people are still returning to the office, but this is really pushing the boundaries of how many uh, different large companies and small companies alike are considering changing their policies because they are seeing a lot of the benefits of flex workers for that personal uh, well-being and that work-life balance that's there. So hopefully, Nicola, I've set the stage well for you. You can tell us a little bit about your company here and what you've been really working on and how FlexWork um, is really helpful for us in this time. Absolutely. Thanks, Lisa. You did. You did indeed. Set me up lovely. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm Nicola Pease and I run um, Ignite Coaching and Consulting and uh, based in the UK. And what we do is we help organisations to make flex work. So what we're about is finding that um, that kind of sweet spot between what the organisation needs in terms of how it can be effective and productive and profitable and what the employees want in terms of how they can manage their work life balance and how they can find that flexibility that they need to be bring them their whole selves to work and so a lot of what I have been doing more recently is helping those organizations that are in that kind of 50 percent of organizations that are thinking about moving to hybrid working and what does that mean and how do we um, how do we make that happen in practice? So it's everything from helping them to rewrite their policies to um, training their line managers in terms of how to you know how to enact the, the new policies. Um, and what I was going to talk about you, um, uh, sorry, to you about today, if I can speak, is um, is just to th have a think about how you can be most productive and effective when you are a flexible worker, because you do need to think differently um, and plan differently when you are going to be working more flexibly. Um, I think, Cole, if you could move the slide on for me, I think I've still got the stats slide. So what I thought I would just do is spend a few minutes just um, talking through how you can be productive and a great flexible worker. And the first thing to consider is that work is an activity, not a place. So, you know, pre-pandemic, there were people who were working in a hybrid way and we may have occasionally worked from home um, or from somewhere else. But predominantly it was about you go to work. Work is, an, is a place that you go to. And what's kind of completely shifted this last year is this view that actually work is an activity and not therefore a place. And if you think about work as an activity, I think, Cole, hopefully there'll be some bullet points that come up in a moment. But if you think about work, work as an activity and therefore how you can be most productive, what you need to think um, or what you need to be able to do is to plan your time effectively and to get really good at planning and scheduling in what activities do I need to do today? Or what activities do I need to do this week? And therefore, when you're thinking about what are the activities I need to carry out? So is it that I have a report that I need to write and I need just clear time and headspace to do that? Is it that I have a um, collaborative presentation that I need to work on with my colleagues? And how might I best do that? And when you're then thinking about um, the activities, you can then start to break that down into where and when is that activity best completed? Um, and if, um, if if the slides work for us, if you could click again, Cole, they, um, there is a model that can help you to, um, to plan out those activities. Um, so my background is HR. So um, when the slide comes up, what you'll see is we love a four box grid in HR. We love a little matrix slide um, along the two axes. And what you can do when you're thinking about your activities is you can plot them along these two axes. So you can uh, think about whether work is synchronous or needs to be done synchronously or whether it needs to be done asynchronously. 
And then you can think about along the other axes, you can think about whether work needs to be done co-located or whether it can be done remotely. And that allows you to kind of create kind of boxes of types of activity and types of work that might be done. Um, and I'm hoping that the slide will catch up with me slightly. I can't see the I can't see the grid yet. No, sorry, Lisa. Yep, it's it's there, Nicola. So is it yeah. me then? It is. Me. <laughs> Excellent. So good thing you know you know the content. You can keep going forward. I'll just keep going. I'll just keep going. Um, and so within the grid, what you can see is that kind of creates like buckets, if you like, of work or types of activity. So you can think about work that is um, synchronous and co-located would be kind of in-person teamwork that needs to be done. So that could be we all need to get together and do a brainstorming exercise or create a, you know, do a collaborative piece of work around a whiteboard, for example. You might have synchronous um, remote activity, which is the virtual team working, which is everything we've been doing for the last year. Like this would be a good example of it. You know, you're kind of you're working with with other people on some things. It could be training, could be a workshop, it could be working collaboratively on documents, etc. And um, that would be virtual uh, kind of team working. And then you'd have um, the asynchronous work. Then again, is is kind of split between in-person team uh, kind of individual work and remote or virtual individual work that can be done asynchronously and um, sometimes people struggle with what is what would sit in that kind of bottom quadrant there of um, kind of in-person but individual work oh, it's caught up with me yay um, and so uh, one of the examples that I'm finding with organizations is if you think about for example like an IT help desk so you need someone to be physically there in the office manning the, you know, manning the kind of the phones and the help desk for as and when things might go wrong because they might be required to physically go and fix an issue. Um, but the work that they're doing is quite often individual. So they're quite often actually fixing things behind the scenes. Um, virtual individual asynchronous work would be the things like the report that you might want to work on. Um, and so when you're thinking about the things that you're going to do remotely, you can then start to think about what type of place might enable you to be most productive to achieve that activity. So as Lisa said, you know, is it home? Is it a kind of co-working or shared space? Is it in a cafe or a restaurant or a hotel lobby or the airport lounge? Um, is it outside? I've um, heard um, one company I'm working with um, is, I love this idea, so I'm going to share it. They have their team meetings as virtual walking meetings now. So everybody goes for a walk and dials into the weekly team meeting so that they're getting some fresh air and some exercise, but also having that kind of, you know, it's the team download, it's everything that's going on that week, it's the updates, etc. cetera. Um, it might be an alternative office or it might be other. I think the what we've shifted away from is this idea of um set like you can well in the last year you can work from home um but you can work from you know anywhere that's kind of like an office but not necessarily your office and i think now there's a whole host of other options for people but then there are some things you might want to consider when thinking about what workplace might be the most um effective for me so thinking about things like noise levels, what distractions and interruptions might there be? So for some people, myself included, I have young children and I can't work from home when they are around because they're just constantly distracting me and interrupting me. Um, you know, what space do you need? What, what do you need in that space to do that work? So if you are going to be doing a sort of collaborative whiteboarding type session, you know, you need the space to be able to do that. Um, thinking about costs, so co some co-working um, and shared spaces you pay for, um, what access requirements might you have and do you have access to, um, to those facilities and similarly what IT access or Wi-Fi access might you need. Um, and then finally thinking about confidentiality, so one thing that, um, that often crops up is you know, this idea of, but if people are working from, say, a cafe environment or a co-working environment, how can we ensure the confidentiality with our um, with our members of staff? And it's thinking about as an individual worker, are there things you might need to take into consideration to make sure that that is covered? Um, and so they're the ways to kind of be productive uh, as a flexible worker. And then what I wanted to just quickly do is to share um, the output some, from some research that I did last year called FlexWorks. Um, and these are what I call the five reasons why FlexWorks. Um, and I won't go into each one in, in massive amounts of detail, given the time that we have. 
But what the research showed was that there'd been a fundamental shift last year in how we approached flexible working. And I'll start at the bottom, actually. What it did was it kind of it, it moved the mindsets away from those people who had been sort of uh, their view was that you cannot be as productive if you are not in a physical working environment. And this last year has just sort of blown that out of the water. And what it has done is it's then therefore created a culture of trust. We now trust our employees to be getting on with their work. We're measuring them based on the outputs of what they are delivering, not on the time and the inputs of are they physically in the office or not today. Um, what it has done and what flexible working does do is it opens up your talent pool, particularly um, flexibility of location means that you can open up to a much wider geographical um, talent pool. So think about, you know, those roles that have been hard to fill, those critical roles that are hard to fill or that you have to, um, you know, almost overpay in order to attract people to a particular location. They're no longer an issue. You could now recruit someone from the other, other side of the world if that role can be done remotely and from home. And it also opens up opportunities for diversity for those people who didn't previously have access to workplaces because they were physical workspaces. They now have that opportunity to be more flexible and to have those um, those roles. Um, what the survey, what the research found was that it actually had improved performance. So um, a majority of people said it had improved both team performance and then 41 percent said it had improved overall company performance. Um, and partly that was because asynchronous working allows allows it to kind of just progress continuously. So you can almost hand off to somebody else in an asynchronous way. Um, and particularly um, when it comes to kind of improving collaboration, I'll, I'll skip to because the two are kind of linked. A lot of the technology that we've started using or started using more in the last year has enabled that massive amounts of collaboration. So you can use things like teams to um, do, you can do virtual whiteboarding, you can do everyone working synchronously in a document at the same time or in a presentation at the same time through um, Google Suite or other um, like software. And it's allowed kind of a more planful approach to kind of workflows and how we're going to work and how we're going to collaborate together. Um, and then last but of course not least is then it, it is also supported employee well-being. Um, not only have we seen a shift in terms of awareness around well-being this last year because of the situation that we found ourselves in, but we've also found that um, people have taken time for their own well-being. So people have used what would have previously been commuting time to spend time with their family, to work on hobbies, to go for a walk or do some sort of exercise. And it has actually um, allowed people to get that kind of work-life balance back and find ways to support their own well-being. Um, and with that, I think I hand back over to Lisa. Thank you so much, Nicola. You are certainly a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the flexible worker. And I encourage you, if you um, have questions for Nicola, drop them in the chat. We will have a few minutes for Q&A and her contact information will also be um, on the last slide as well. But I can tell you with people like Nicola and other people in the industry, Kensington has really enjoyed getting to know these types of people and being able to consult as far as trying to figure out the best solutions moving forward. Um, so we can help you with the equipment side uh, with Kensington equipment. But then as you can hear from Nicola, there's so much more than the equipment as well that goes into creating that policy that works best for your organization. So one of the most popular questions that I get asked while going through this hybrid work really um, exploding in our faces lately is how do we get people prepared to be working in any type of environment? Uh, we don't have a huge budget to spend, but we wanna make sure that people are um, certainly comfortable while they work and that they can have that flexibility that Nicola was talking about. So if you can go to the next slide, Cole, I'm gonna talk a little bit from the ergonomic side. The number one challenge that we see is working off just a laptop. And so if you feel that your employees are fine just having a laptop, let me tell you, there are so many articles and so many findings coming out. Um, and I can tell you from the ergonomic perspective that it is not an efficient way to work. It's not the, um, the best way to work by any means for really longer than 20 or 30 minutes without exterior devices. So one of the shocking statistics that I do think hits home with a lot of people 
is that our head weighs approximately five kilograms or 11 pounds. That is the size of a newborn baby um, or a bowling ball. So whichever one you might have a little bit more familiarity with, think about trying to hold that up all day long. It's tiring. And so that being said, we have to make sure that we are supported in our workstation. And the number one way we can do that when we're trying to look at flexible working is to get a laptop riser and something to get that screen up to our eye level. So we're not having to lean forward to look down at our laptop like the image shows. So if we keep the screen at eye level, it does certainly ease the tension um, in our muscles and it helps support the vertebrae to have the absolute lightest load that's there. So I can tell you this following slide is the setup that I bring everywhere with me. It's super small, it's super compact. Um, and I would say that probably most women's purses could actually fit it in there uh, as many people like to carry good size purses these days. Um, but that being said, it will fit in pretty much any backpack with your computer um, and super lightweight to carry. As I know when I've adapted others to hot desking or shared spaces in the past, the number one concern was bulky equipment or hard to use equipment and they went back to their laptop. So I call this the work from anywhere kit, um, even in the smallest workspace. So whether that is in the car maintenance shop or if it's in a hotel lobby, or even in your home that you don't have a proper office to set up. This is the number one um, package basically that I would recommend to anybody that's considering flexible work. So the first is the laptop riser. Um, it's smart fit compatible, which means that you are able to adjust it to multiple sizes. And if you're not familiar with Kensington's smart fit system, basically there's a hand chart that it comes in the bag, or I'm sorry, in the box, um, that you're able to place your hand on and it will show you what color you need to adjust that riser to, to be the best fit for you. Um, once that laptop is up on that riser and nice and eye level though, to avoid wrist issues, you do need to have that external keyboard and mouse. So we do have a very, very small multi-device compact keyboard um, and then the SureTrack dual wireless mouse. Both of those are plug and play. Honestly, when I'm at my home office um, and I have a full setup available to me, I use a docking station and other mechanisms that I'm able to just plug one cord in, but I actually keep the dongles plugged in at all times or go Bluetooth uh, with that keyboard and mouse to make it really easy to be portable and take it with you wherever you go. Um, so that being said, this is just one solution that we do have from Kensington. It's my personal favorite. I've probably recommended it. I don't even know how many times um, during the last uh, period of time with the pandemic happening. Um, but basically with that, we certainly suggest that if you do have questions about your workforce going into that hybrid role or trying to become more flexible, um, we certainly invite you to contact us at sales at kensington.com. Um, but that really is the, the majority of our content today. We do wanna make sure we do leave it open for questions to Nicola or myself on our solutions. Um, or to Nicola on her wealth of knowledge that she has there. So I appreciate Nicola taking the time today. We've got the um, both email addresses uh, for Kensington as well as the website. So please feel free to jot that down if you do have questions to reach out to uh, Kensington's hybrid consultants or to Nicola to do some coaching um, on what you heard today. And please feel free to type in any questions you may have in the chat. Otherwise, Nicola, I have a question for you while we're waiting, um, if there are any that come in. <laughs> so one of the things that um, I've heard is that people struggle to work in a flexible environment because they feel like that's only meant to be for non-focused work. And so if I'm you know, out and about, I feel like I can only do a small portion of my job. Do you have any recommendations for people um, if they do maybe some very focused work and some collaborative, some maybe lighter type work of how they could set up their day or any advice around that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's something that crops up all the time. So when you're um, 
you know, ideally you would, uh, you know, everything would fit into a nice neat box, which would be like, oh, on Wednesday, I just have to focus. And that's, you know, I've got a focused activity I'm going to do and I'm going to work from home that day and get that done. But um, life is not like that, is it? So um, <laughs> what happens is we have multiple activities that we need to carry out during the day. And I think it's just thinking about what, what, your whichever work environment you go for that day it may not be the perfect environment for every single one of those activities but what is it that you need to do what is the biggest output that you need from that day and therefore what I choose I guess the place of work to go with that activity and then fit everything else around it um, and just have you, you know you need the right it's kind of set up so um for example if you're doing things like this and you were in a you know a noisy environment you would need some headphones in you would need to make sure that people can hear what you, what's going on there are there's i guess tools and, and kit that you can use that will help you to to be able to balance out the day um there isn't a, there isn't a perfect answer to it i'm afraid but it is just thinking about what's the you know what's the single most important thing i need to do today what do I need to achieve and go with that as the that's that's what you focus your activity place on. Perfect that's good advice and I will say to you Nicola you mentioned uh, while we were talking about or while you were talking through the benefits of flex working um, the confidentiality and the privacy privacy side of it that is something that we didn't touch on a whole lot today um, but with Kensington having privacy screens and different security options uh, our webinar last week was on data and device protection, which that is up on YouTube now if anyone is listening and would like to check that out. Um, otherwise, uh, Cole, do you mind dropping the registration link in the chat for the final webinar for next week? Um, we are closing out with one more on homeworking actually next week. Um, and we have loved doing this series as hybrid working encompasses so much. It's not just oh, sometimes you're at work um, in the office, sometimes you're at home. There's so many different components of it. And we saw just a sliver of it today with the flexible working. So um, if there's no other questions, um, I haven't seen any others come in at this point. Again, you can always contact us um, at the email addresses listed on the screen. Nicola or our sales team uh, would love to forward the request to the appropriate person. Otherwise, um, there's tons of great information on both of our websites as well, as far as what we're standing for and for Kensington, a lot of the solutions that we have available um, to you. So um, I really appreciate Nicola joining us today uh, across the pond. Um, <laughs> and despite technical difficulties that always seem to happen, that's part of hybrid working and virtual. So I appreciate the time everyone for joining. And again, please feel free to contact us or visit our websites if you have any further information. Thanks for Thanks. joining everyone. Thanks.